get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Tony Horton. You know, what I like about uh, the stories, Robert, is he talks about the tough times, how he made money as a street mime. Um, he would put hat on, his hat on the street and he collected money for his food and his rent money. And this was before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars. Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark fought cancer twice and won. Um, Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how he was Steve Jobs' mentor. Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. Um, there's many more. Check out episodes on inspiredinsider.com. One of my favorites, Robert, who no one's heard of, uh, most people, Chris Atigekai, when he was seven, he became an orphan because both his parents died of AIDS and he was the oldest of five children. He became the head of the household, the caretaker for his younger siblings. Within a year, um, while still getting used to the adult responsibilities, his brother died while walking in the hospital. So he formed two nonprofits, I think two for-profit companies. Um, since then, the, it's incredible what he's been through. So check that out. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Uh, at Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners. Basically, what we do is we create a systemized incoming referral pipeline, which generates ROI using a podcast. And for me, it's a lot more personal because it's not just about your business. It's about you leaving a legacy for yourself and your guests. Um, Because I was inspired by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor and he and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany and were the only people to survive. And his words and legacy live on because of the interview the Holocaust Foundation did with him, which you can watch on my about page. So Yes, podcasting will help your business. It's been the, one of the best things I credit to my single best thing I've done for my business and my life outside of meeting my wife because of the amazing relationships, but it also helps you leave a legacy. So Robert, I am excited. You know, this is a long time coming. I want to introduce Robert Hartline. Over the past 21 years, he's started and grown four companies from zero to $12 million. And the past few years alone has taken those businesses from 12 million to over $100 million in sales. And his company was named fastest growing business in Middle Tennessee two years in a row. His companies include Absolute Wireless, which is a preferred partner for Sprint. They have over 59 retail locations. If you think you're stressed out, I think of Robert when I think I'm stressed out. Of all the staff and employees and I can't even imagine how stressful stress you are. And you you're always seem so calm. Um, and they're all over Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi. He started Dang It Repair, a cell phone repair company, Callproof, which is a software that helps B2B sales teams manage their customers and sales activity reporting. Shift Your Time, which we'll talk about, which um, I want Robert to really dig deep in because he teaches business leaders and entrepreneurs how to get back an extra 40 hours of productivity a month using specific communication techniques. And he uses Marco Polo as one of them. Um, And Hitch, which is an inventive ride share service encouraging employees to carpool. Fun fact, he does all this um, while spending about six months in Costa Rica. I don't know how you do it. Robert, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thanks for having me. Jeez, oh my God. So let's start off, you know, Black Friday just occurred, whenever you're listening to this, you know, you said before we got on, you did 45% more than last year on Black Friday. This is probably the one of the busiest times of year for you. And yet you look so calm right now. I would think of you pulling my hair out. What, What do you think was the difference between last year and this year with the increase in Black Friday? Oh, wow. I don't want my competitors to know these. Okay. Okay. No, I'm kidding. No, I, I, no, honestly, um, you know, one of the things that I've really gotten obsessed with is yeah. um, treating my marketing like a science experiment. Yeah. And so what happens when you've done an experiment, you analyze what your results are, you document it, and then you, you're ready for the next thing. Well, for us in retail, you look at, you know, your Black Fridays and you try to figure out, well, what worked this year? And we, you know, we do that every single year and talk about what worked and then what didn't work. And um, 
uh, we had a great team. We did some fantastic marketing, all the lessons we've learned with marketing on Facebook and converting someone who raises their hand and says, Hey, I'm interested and get that person into the store is one of the things that I've spent a lot of time on. But uh, the reason I look so relaxed is I have a great team <laughs> that does it. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't sell phones in the stores anymore, but um, if I did, I'd be just distressed and I would have more wrinkles up top here, but uh, no, I got a great team making things happen. What's one thing like another retail store should be doing to get someone o- online to get from the Oh, you know what the best, biggest mistake yeah. is people don't answer their phone right. Mm. Oh my God, it's the base of a relationship. You know, 27% of all of our business occurs on the telephone first. Mm. If I take all of our closed business and I'm in a unique scenario because I get paid on a phone number and I have a, fistic- a, a really fancy phone system that tracks all this stuff. So I have all their data. So I can tell you with 100% certainty that 27% of the time, a customer started that relationship with a phone call. And, you know, you and I, if we wanted to ask a girl out, right, what do you have to do? You had to call her. Like you had to have some skills on the telephone, right? Most millennials, (laughs) like, I mean, they may even copy and paste a text to ask a girl out. And they probably Google best text for, you know, dating a girl and they just copy and paste it. Like I know how to talk on the phone with normal people. Well, answering the phone is the same way. I mean, Mm. if you answer your phones with energy, excitement, building rapport, you know, it's a greeting, name exchange, um, use their name in conversation and you build that rapport because I know, um, if uh, someone calls one of our stores, they in fact probably pass a half dozen wireless stores on my way to, on their way to my store. Yeah. And so I got to win them over with a great experience on the phone to get them to land in the door. So my advice there for, for retailers is be good at the phone because people are still calling and that's your first impression for a lot of these uh, opportunities. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at videos. There's one of you actually, you record a personalized video to a customer and you send it to them saying, thank you. I know you passed 70 different stores. Talk about why you created that and and how that works. Well, uh, I use that lots of different uh, avenues for me. I mean, building that relationship to let people know that, you know, you did not buy the phone from a corporate uh, location. Like, I have like 380 real people with real families that work for me that have kids and they have bills and they have parents they take care of. And um, I try to give give a little personal spin to let them know that when they're buying from me, that they're they're buying from a real human with two kids and a mortgage, you know, those kind of things, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. we're real people. And I think people appreciate that to some regard that, um, that people are being, hey, being real. They're real life people that uh, help help to serve, right? Yeah, and one of the things you mentioned on that video, which I love, is you talk about, you know, one of the things with your initiatives, you train leaders. You train um, leaders that will be the future entrepreneurs and future leaders. Um, yeah. So I want, I want to, we will talk about training leaders, but I want to go back to a time period, if you remember, Because you say right now you don't sell phones, but there was a time period where you would go up to people at gas station. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Well, dude, it's called hustle. (laughs) You know, it's 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 using the top hole in your face to generate income, and you know, talk to people. And you know, a lot of people is a numbers game. You know, it's a people game. You know, it's just generally talking to people. And it is outside most people's comfort zone to talk to a stranger. And uh, most people will have this experience is, you know, being nervous, you're sweaty, you're nervous, you know, all those things um, that I had to literally face that fear um, to, to generate income for myself. But once you've kind of done it a couple of times, you know, Jeremy, were you in band? No. Okay. I, I was in sports and other activities. but Okay. So I was the band geek. All okay. right. And so this is how band works. You're either first chair, second chair, or third chair. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if you're a first chair, you're the best. But let's say you're second chair and Jeremy, you play tenor saxophone. I would have been 10th chair, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to be first place. Well, you get to be first place through practice. 
And you have to be um, willing to go in your bedroom and annoy the fire out of your parents playing the same song over and over until you get good. Because the way band works is if I wanted to be first chair, I would tell the band director who happened to be my dad at the time and say, dad, uh, <laughs> I want to be first chair. And he'd be like, son, there, there's no special road to success. You got to compete. Hmm. And in order to compete, you got to challenge your rival. And so what you'd have to do is literally he would pick a sheet of music and say, all right, play the sheet of music in front of everyone. And he'd give it to the first person, the first chair person and say, play this in front of everyone. And it was a simple, it was like American Idol without the, texting the vote. I mean, it's like, you're either good or you're bad. And that's, and that's how you got ahead. Well, that's really how sales is, right? Sales is talking to strangers, learning how to, to recognize people's behaviors, their body movements, the way they talk, how to direct your body language to match who they are to, you can build rapport with people. I mean, it, it's just a, it's the beauty of it all is with practice. We can get a good at anything. You know? So paint the picture for people, Robert, what was going on in your life and business life at the time of the gas station experiment and what you actually said when you did this? Well, uh, that happened to be, so, you know, I started selling cell phones in 1994 and phones back then were a, you know, I had to sell it on the idea of you needed a phone for safety and security. Because everyone was, I don't need a phone. You know, who had phones? You know, business people, realtors, you know, mm -hmm. doctors, you know, people, highfalutin people, right, would have a cell phone, right? Um, and I did that for a number of years, started my own business in 98 and um, opened up a retail store. Well, nobody was coming in. So I was very lucky because I was in front of a gas station. And listen, if there's people walking by, whatever you own your business or whatever, you have opportunities. Okay, forget about money and marketing and all the stuff you could do to drive. I mean, today, the most important thing for any business is a good sign. Hmm. Good sign. A lot of people are like, oh, they'll put up a sign that says, uh, you know, um, daisies. Let's say you had a flower shop. I mean, your flower shop was called daisies. What the hell is daisies? Well, I know hmm. it's a flower. Call it flower shop. Like, yeah. let's not get too complicated here. But anyway, long story short, if you have traffic in front of your stores, it was just a conversation. So people would pull up to the gas station. And back then I had a Nextel store. And so I'd see someone at the gas station. I'd walk up and say, hey, I don't know if you're interested. Here's my card on the Nextel store across the street. And I'd love to give uh, you know, a, a quote to switching to Sprint to see if, if it's a fit for you. And I just had that conversation over and over. And listen, I had a captive audience. What does it take? 90 seconds to fill up your gas? I mean, <laughs> they can't go. They can't run away. <laughs> they anywhere. And, the, you know, so it was, and, um, you know, at first I, first I tried the, you know, the, the weak approach. And that is make a statement, walk away and see if they follow. Well, what you learn over time is you make a statement with a question, right? The statement is, did you know that we're right across the street? I'd like to give you a quote. What service do you have today? Hmm. And then, it, then, and then that was your conversation. And then it was, then it would, you could figure out where you could spend time and where you didn't. But I mean, it literally grew my business just by, I mean, just talking and getting mm -hmm. over that fear of rejection and stranger danger and all those things that are very untrue. I mean, I will tell you, there is nothing more fun and exhilarating than talking to a stranger who buys from you right then. Like that's freaking no, nothing else beats that adrenaline rush that you get that makes it fun. Yeah. And, and I remember watching a video. I, I encourage anyone to check out your videos online, but where you map out whatever, if it's 25 conversations produces one sale, that means it's $10 per conversation. Oh. So you can actually track it down to, to dollars when it, when it's said and done. Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, and really as, as leaders, our mission should be, inspiring our teams to do the same thing because once they uncover they have this hidden skill it's like this cape that i can throw on and i'm like a superhero because if i need money like i just got to use this yeah it's not fancy technology or all there's all these whiz bang things you can do but literally you know i used to do this thing all the time when i was selling door to door i love this i'd go to a tire a tire shop Okay. There's a waiting room in the tire shop and you can walk into the tire shop and sit in the waiting room. Nobody knows why you're there. 
So you'd find an audience and I would literally make my phone ring. I would, I would hit the button and go ring, ring, and I'd answer it. And I would literally mm. give a sales pitch to the per to this fictional person Genius. about my product. I love it. And guess what? Everyone heard that. And I would hang out and people would always talk to me. They're like, oh, what I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but I was wondering about that. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, and I, I, you know, you know, part of the selling part is you're always busy. A good salesperson has a full book of business. So I always yeah. had this attitude like, dude, I'm, I'm really busy. I, I, I got to get my tire fixed. But let me see what I got on my schedule and see if I can fit you in. I don't know what I can. I, I got another call coming in. And that would just make people want you, you know? It would just yeah. literally, it, there's nothing else. Oh. I mean, it's basic selling stuff that works. Yeah. I just, for some reason, visualize you, Robert, with a GoPro on your head, doing one of these things today and sending it to your team like, un, is it an undercover boss? It's undercover gas station sales? Or... <laughs> I think that's genius, you know, going in today into a crowded, I don't know, waiting room of some sort and doing the sales pitch, videotaping it and sending it or having someone from the team do that. That's, that's as genius. As long as it's the right audience, I mean, it, 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 it absolutely will, I mean, what else are they going to do? <laughs> Where are they going to go? I love it. Let's talk about training leaders, you know, um, and a little bit about how you use shift your time to train leaders. Yeah. So, um, training leaders, uh, you know, a lot of people, um, generally in, in my world, um, when it comes to retail, number one, there's, there, there's two opportunities when it comes to what I can give someone that would work at absolute wireless. Number one, I give them an opportunity to learn how to sell. And then once you're ready to graduate to, you know, developing leaders is learning how to lead people and how to get people yeah. to do things um, for you and help benefit the entire team. Yeah. Um, the, the leadership piece, uh, there are, um, it's definitely a skill that you can learn and that if you spend any time and energy, oh gosh, there's so many tools right now to learn about leadership. Um, but a lot of it is basically figuring out what buttons do I need to push for Jeremy to be motivated? Mm. Whether it's money, status, uh, recognition, um, you know, what is it that gets your gears turning? And one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen leaders make, I make this mistake every week. And that is I sometimes assume people um, are being led and driven by money. Mm. And a vast majority of people aren't driven that way. And so you really got to find other ways to get people um, really bought into the mission uh, and what the overall thing is. And, and I'm in a unique position with the, the things that I do. I mean, I sell something freaking amazing, like a cell phone. Like, it's so amazing. Like all the things, there's not one consumer product that tops the phone. Like literally your phone is everything. Like you can, may not even be able to get home without your phone, without an Uber. You may not even be able <laughs> totally to eat true. without Uber eats. You may not even find a date through Tinder. Like if you don't have, I mean, like there's a thousand, it full, it fills all the needs you have as a human to have this device. And what you can learn on YouTube, like, oh my God, that's a whole university of itself videos you can watch on YouTube to go through a learning process to learn whatever you want. But I get to sell that to people. And I, I, there's nothing that is cool, cooler than the, the, the technology piece. And, you know, a few years ago, talking about shift your time, a few years ago, a employee said, Hey, have you heard of this app called Marco Polo? And, um, and I looked at it and played with it. And I was like, oh, my God, you mean I could do video messages to people? And it's like store and send and it's not live. And you're not relying on you and I having the same schedule. I was like, holy cow. It's like a Nextel, but with video, but without having to do it at the same time. And so if you've never heard of Marco Polo... I'm not a stockholder. I don't have investment in the company. I'm not selling you to use the app. But 
it is a free app and you should absolutely use it. it it's completely changed my life because when you are trying to communicate with other people, the default of American business today has been a phone call. If I want to communicate with Jeremy, I got to call Jeremy. Well, I don't care if Jeremy's in a, me a meeting or working or whatever. I got to, I want to talk to Jeremy. By God, you're going to listen to me now. Like it is the ultimate intrusion device to stop what you were doing to focus on Robert Hartline for whatever reason. Like the fact that you even answer your phone is pretty remarkable. And most entrepreneurs don't realize this simple fact. 80% of what we do as a business owner or leader is communicate. And for a vast majority of us, it has, has been for decades, it's been the cell phone. But if I call you, Jeremy, in the middle of you working on a project, you're on your computer, you're focused, you're writing an email, maybe you're doing a, a, a massive change in your marketing strategy, you're really heavily in, in the thinking process and I call you and you're like, Oh my gosh, potential opportunity. I'm going to answer the phone. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. You answer that and talk to me. It takes the average person 25 minutes to get back into that state of flow. Yeah. yeah it was a switching cost. Yeah. And, and that constant di disruption from your day over and over and over completely changes the game and what you can accomplish in your day. And what, um, what Marco Polo has done is not only am I communicating with audio from my voice, but my facial expressions, the tone and tempo of my voice, what is exciting, what is scary, what is angrily maddening, all these things I can communicate through body language. You can't communicate through body language on a telephone call. You can't communicate through body language on an email. Now the email is the second most popular communication tool that, oh my God, how many different ways can you write an email and be wrong every single one of those times? How many times have you written an email where, where Sally got her feelings hurt because you use a capital, uh, you know, all caps or, uh, you know, the wrong the wrong message to the wrong people like people communicate in different ways and the beauty of all of this and you know it's funny i talk to i talk to so many entrepreneurs that i talk about marco polo and they're like oh why wouldn't you just get on facetime okay again you're going to stop what i'm doing to talk on yeah, FaceTime. It's you you said this when we talked before is it's asynchronous communication right and that's the power of it right? You don't have to be there at the same time. You yeah. do it at your convenience. Yeah. And so, you know, what I did with my consulting model is um, we basically go to companies and we say, listen, let's analyze the way you communicate. Let's develop a playbook because one of the number one things that people fail on when they go to Marco Polo, they introduce it to the team and it becomes another system. It's in addition to Slack, in email, in phone call, in their Zoom calls, in their conference calls, in their video calls. Like, it's like another thing. And, and what I do is I work with organizations and, and give them the why. And so, listen, you're going to use all your internal communication to be Marco Polo. You got a great idea. That's great, Jeremy. Tell me in Marco Polo. And when I get an opportunity, I can absorb it, listen to it, think about it before I respond. And it, it becomes a change in the way you receive information, deal with information, and send information. And you just cannot get that in any other platform. Where should we send people to check out more about you can, uh, you shift can, uh, your time? I have a, I have a course and, um, you know, just because Rise25 helped me a lot with some, some business ideas when I came out to one of your conferences, I'll give you guys a code so you guys can do the course for free. Um, we have an online course that three and a half hours of content on how to use Marco Polo to hiring and firing and coaching and training and they're kind of leading a sales organization or leading an ops team. All those things. I got videos on how to use it to really add that extra 40 hours a week in productivity through changing just a few things and communicating it through a playbook and it makes it super easy. Mm. 
So where should people check out the, uh, the website? And I'll, I'll think about if we'll create a code because I think people value what they pay for. So I don't oh, even yeah. know if it should be completely free. Like uh, they should have I, some no. skin in the game. I mean, it's yeah. not like you're doing it to make money. It's just like if I pay you for something, which I'd rather pay you than get it for free personally because that means I'm invested in it. I'm actually more likely to do it. You know, yeah. so well, you know, what's it's, the it's my mission to get people to stop yeah. fucking calling me, Jeremy. That, <laughs> when I heard that, I'm like, okay, fine, I'm not calling you anymore. That's no problem. Um, <laughs> I, and I, I respect that. Used to do more, you know. um, now you can go to shiftyourtime.com. Shiftyourtime.com. Okay. And um, you can go there and, and do the do the online course and you know do it with your team. But you know, I I, I do structure a little bit. You got to be very calculating in the way you deploy this kind of tool. In a, in a specific way. Otherwise you will create a little tension, you know, just getting a team to use Slack, you know, you get people that that's a whole challenge in and of itself. Any communication. I mean, people generally are so resistant to anything new it's true. that they literally fight it. And I have a very easy sales pitch for people, Robert, when I tell them about it, I said, listen, Robert has like 400 employees and um, has over $100 million. If you think you're too good to use this app, then don't use it. That's, that's my sales pitch to, for friends. I hear you. It, I hear okay? So like it's more like a takeaway. Like, okay, like don't. Because like you said, most people don't want to download another app. So talk about what are some of the other tools you do use? And um, how do you integrate that with, how do you integrate Marco Polo with Slack or is it a replacement of? Slack. Oh, it's, yeah, we, we, we used Slack a couple of years ago. We stopped using Slack because we're, we're using this. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the power of leadership is, is, is inspirational. Like I got to inspire my team to go out and hit it again. So I, I had a, a great team that hustled it over the weekend. I mean, they worked their fannies off, but Monday, I got to get in front of everybody and get them jazzed about this week because the sales aren't, it's not over, folks. You still got to come out and buy, right? So I got to get my team re-engaged and there's no other way to sell through without this. Like this is my tool, you know, me in front of people in front of an audience. And this great thing about Marco Polo is you can have groups, you can have groups of people. So I have groups of stores. I have groups of leaders. Um, I have problem groups. You know, if, if some problem arises, let's say managers aren't setting their schedules properly. I'll get a select group of managers and select group of DMs and a couple of smart people and get on a Marco Polo and say, guys, by Friday, we're going to solve this issue together. Here's the problem. We're going to go through the IDS model of EOS, which is, you know, identify the problem, discuss and solve. And so the beauty of this asynchronous conversation piece is there's a temptation during problem solving that, me and you are going to solve the problem right now on a call. But you know what really solves problems? When you go, you're in the shower, you're washing your hair. And then that little idea pops in like, bing. Oh my God, that's the solution. Hmm. Well, I need to give space for the idea generation to happen. That's why not all ideas or problems need to be solved in an hour meeting. I think that's why meetings don't work generally. You got to give them a little bit of space to kind of, filter some ideas, talk some stories, you know, hear some what the real problems. Often we, we solve the wrong thing or we create another problem with our solution. So. Robert, what kind of cadence do you use? Do you do a regular cadence like every day for these groups or no? No, no. I mean, it, you know, a lot of it is less is more. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I do teach in that, uh, in my course is, you know, you're going to be on video, Right. And if you're going to press that record button, what are you going to say? Have you thought about it? Have you really thought about it? Because one of the major problems when you get on video, if you're not, um, not thought through your, what you're going to say, you will ramble and ramble and ramble and ramble. So what's, what's, you know, there's some good strategy behind you documenting what you're going to say, putting your phone in airplane mode so you can record a video that if you don't like it, delete it, do another one. Because the way Marco Polo works, because it's so simple, is you hit start and stop. And when you hit stop, it's gone. It's gone to whoever the recipient is. They're going to watch it. Now, I could quickly delete it before they watched it. But the beauty of the tool is, this, of, is the speed of sending those videos. Mm -hmm. you could, before Marco Polo, I could record a video 
upload it to something and send it to someone, but that's a big giant yeah. hassle. One of what I like about it too is it's, you could watch it at two times speed. So I can, if someone does leave a really long one, you can, you can yeah. speed it up actually. Yeah. Um, what are, you know, what's interesting, someone from the outskirts, I've never seen anyone implement as quickly as you do with, with different ideas and, and tests, uh, which is amazing to see in action. Um, and, and from observing someone like you, you'd think this guy is just has so many things going on, but what, when you look closer, they all tie together. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about how the business is tied together with, you know, you have absolute wire as ding and repair, call proof, shift your time. All of them came out of the yeah. companies. Yeah, absolutely. They are, are they all they integrated. All are, they all are connected really. Um, you know, they all solve your problem. Pardon Which me? one came for, they all solve like an, an issue that you had or some, you know, some pain point that you had. Well, I mean, you know, for, for my phone repair business, I mean, the best time to switch your service is when you break your phone. So it's a natural fit that I fix phones and try to get you to get another carrier, right? Um, you know, call proof, we had a, a problem with outside salespeople saying they were doing something they weren't really doing because they don't want to enter stuff in CRM. And we built an app that automated the, all the information of daily activity. I mean, if you lead salespeople, um, you can almost guarantee what your results are going to be next month based on the activities you do this month, depending mm -hmm. on what your sales cycle is. Mm -hmm. If you got a 30 day sales cycle, I mean, the, the results are 30 days away, right? Well, if you have a sales team not making calls and that's how you generate business, wouldn't you want to know that in real time? I mean, so many business leaders do it like this. They, they'll, they'll look at their CRM and go, well, Johnny, you only, you only called uh, one person yesterday. Well, guess what, Jeremy? You got no time machine. I don't care what he did yesterday. You can't go back in time and fix that. Like, why even bother making that salesperson feel bad? So I tell people, like, you look at data with activity in the middle of the day at noon. Because guess what? Sales is a tough gig. It, it's hard. Like your first sales call, Jeremy, could be that total douchebag that was a total jackass to you. And he like took the sale out of your, you know, the wind out of your sale, like right away. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're a good sales leader and you see that someone's not done the activity, I'm going to call him. Hey, Jeremy, hey, how's your day going? How, how's, how's things going? Now, I'm not calling him and say, Jeremy, you only got one call today. That's not going to get me anywhere. Right. Nowhere. Zero. Okay. So, but I may hear you say, well, you know, I called this guy and he was a real butthole. Dude, that's, yeah, that's what sales is, man. Let's pucker up, buttercup. Let's do this. <laughs> let's get on a call together. Let's, let's do a call. I'll do one. You do one. I'll do one. You do one. If you give the rep some ample opportunity to get a win, get a little bit of taste of success, that will carry them on. And you, you have to figure out as leader, you got to figure out how to be a drug dealer, dude. Because that's all success leadership is all about. I got to give you a little bit of taste of success to carry you forward. And so I got to get you a hit. Because we all know when you do something in sales that yields a result, you get that little dopamine hit. It feels so good, right? When that dopamine goes away, you're like, shit, I need some more. So if you got it through active selling or talking to strangers or, you know, you know, doing what you do in sales, you want more of that. So you got to keep pushing that forward. You got to keep, get, the, get them a little taste of it. So we're all little drug dealers, right? We got to get a little, oh, I got to figure out how can I get some dopamine to Jeremy because I want him to taste this stuff. This stuff is good. You got to come see me, right? But you, you got to get people tasting it. And once they taste it and they feel how it feels and it makes them feel good and they feel good about what they do. And then they just, it, it just kind of, carries on and it, it helps it helps propel them so what are some ways you see them again you're naturally kind of hit on supporting that person right how you can support them what are so and you mentioned sometimes we default to thinking money is going to motivate someone what have you seen the different motivations that we should be thinking about to help lead people well sometimes uh if you've never seen money 
then you don't know what it can do for you. So a lot of times I'll point that out in terms of like, all right, I don't know if you know this, but this person working in your store during the same hours that you work makes $3,000 more a month. Hmm. What do you think about and sit on that just for a minute? Now, you really have to make a decision whether you are renting me your time or you want to create value. Because we all know people who spend their time on value creation make more money in everything they do. They are looking for ways to wow and impress another person who has money in their pocket that's willing to spend money. And it's not about just selling a lot. It's about creating lots of value. So when I sit in front of a, a prospect looking at buying a phone, I want to talk about all the wonderful things that these gizmos can do to their life. And if they only had these gizmos and you knew how to use them, how much more amazing life could be with those tools. And as long as you are able to kind of walk a salesperson to that thought process and get them to understand it's about value creation, because literally a high performance salesperson in my organization with an average sales performer, there's about $5,000 a month in difference in the amount of income that they can have work the same amount of hours, but they do their hours differently. Hmm. And there's two types of people in my world, people who are renting me their time. I'll show up for eight hours. And there's the other people who are like, Oh my gosh, man, I'm going to make the most of these eight hours. Cause listen, if I'm going to take this time away from my family, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do this work. And I do talk a lot about, you know, when they are on the floor, they are working for their family. That's why they're there. And it, yeah, it's for them to, to generate money from themselves. But listen, um, when you get a team member's spouse bought into that organization, that listen, I'm going to hold you accountable, Jeremy. But if I hold you accountable and you make more money, are you mad at me? I mean, let's be real. Are you going to be mad at me? Because I'm going to challenge you with some things. And if I see you on the floor and you don't greet a customer properly, you don't give them good eye contact, you're not building um, any rapport, no name exchange. When that customer walks out, I'm gonna be like, Jeremy, dude, how do you expect to be a success if you don't even know the customer's name? And when you say the customer's name, Jeremy, 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 it's like little bitty hugs, and that person will just love you and love you forever. Because ultimately, what I'm trying to do in a store is at the end of the week, Jeremy's out with his boys going to steak dinner at Bob's Steakhouse and he slaps his brand new iPhone 11 on the counter. I want his boys to go, dude, you got a new phone. About time to get rid of that old ancient phone. <laughs> and I want Jeremy to go, dude, that robber guy at the Sprint store, freaking A, that guy's the bomb. You got to buy from him. That's ultimately what I'm working for when I'm selling. It's mm -hmm. what I teach my team. A great salesperson is not a salesperson. They are a sales manager because ultimately my role in the store is to create customers to be my salespeople to go around the community and bring the sales to me. And I'm just simply the manager of those sales reps. So I'm not selling. I'm trying to recruit you to be my sales, part of my sales team. And I do that through value creation. Like when mm. I sit down and show someone that they can add a shortcut in their phone Hmm. They can add their school's address as a, as a Google map short link. So you get in your home screen and you just hit the, the maps to the school to, get, to drive to pick up your kids. A lot of people don't even really realize this. You may not even know this. You can save 10 minutes a day hmm. if you always use Google maps or Waze, any of those tools to get and avoid traffic. If you use that on every single transaction, you could add that extra time in mm. your day by just using that on a, as a, become a habit for you. Mm. But that's about just creating, you know, value for someone. You may came in to pay your bill, but I gave you some value. I give you just a little bit of knowledge that you didn't have before. Maybe I show you a new tool like Marco Polo that's going to make a far better relationship with your spouse because you can communicate better. So... Anyway. Yeah, yeah, your salespeople become trusted advisors and they're almost becoming like mini shift, you know, shift your time advocates of giving them one or two or three things that would make save them time, which time is money, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, 
it, what's really sad in our society is in the 70s, we built these big office spaces to house big IBM mainframe computers. And so all the knowledge workers had to go to an office because this expensive equipment. And everyone started using the interstate more and traffic started to creep in. Next thing you know, you got really overweight people sitting in traffic to get to an office to use a computer that was at their house. It's just like, it's just the whole, the whole thing um, needs someone to go out. I mean, I've literally thought someone's got to get on Netflix and do a documentary on how changing the way you communicate can make you healthier, wealthier, and have more time with your kids and your family by changing this mindset of, oh, I got to make a phone call or I got to be in an office to do work. I got to have my whole team in downtown Nashville. Are you kidding me? Come on. You're going to drive two and a half hours a day to go to an office? Like, how do you have time to exercise or spend time with your kids or eat healthy? You can't. You can't. You just give up a lot of stuff. Thanks for sharing some of those things, Robert, because I think anyone who works for you or onboards, you know, gets probably a rock star sales training, you know, a rock star sales, sales training leading into leadership training. So thanks for sharing a few of those tidbits. Um, I always ask Robert, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been the toughest moment um, in business and then what's been one of the proudest moments? And before telling me your toughest maybe moment, talk about just some of the tough parts about retail because it's not, it's not easy. No, I mean, um, you know, we're in a we're in a challenging environment. I mean, great environment. Our economy's kicking butt right now, um, which creates some pressure on what you can afford to bring people on. So, you know, when you have unemployment rate at two and a half percent, I mean, there's not a lot of people out there uh, that are dying to come work. And so you really have to, um, you have to figure out a different reason they come to work with you. And um, for me, it's teaching selling skill. The, the most important, most lucrative thing on the planet to do is selling. I don't care. There's not one other profession that pays more than selling. Ultimately, you know, that skill set, man, you're good, right? And then you transition if you want into leader. Not everyone wants to be a leader, but learning that leadership thing is it's helpful. Um, probably the most challenging thing in business. Oh my gosh. Um, you know what? It would have to be dealing with people who have lack of integrity hmm. and, um, people that, you know, honestly from, uh, you know, our school system probably does not do a very good job going over what a felony is and, and the consequences of a felony, you know, you, stel you steal one of our phones, it's over $1,000. It's a felony, all right? And if you get convicted of a felony, like there's a lot of places you can no longer work at. Man, you can even deliver mail if you have a felony. But some people have never been taught um, those kind of consequences. And a lot of it is in our school system's not built to develop entrepreneurs and get them inspired and all that stuff. And so when they get out in the real world and they realize how hard it is and no one's ever, I mean, you, I walked into my, uh, I remember watching, walking into my, um, uh, my kid's kindergarten classroom and they had this, you know, profession picture, right? It had the fireman, it had the attorney, it had the police officer, the male, it had all these like, like not one of them was a salesperson. <laughs> Not one of them was a sales manager. Not one of them was a business owner. Like none of those things. I mean, our schools are simply not designed to, ins I mean, to inspire people. And it kind of makes sense. Imagine if you took the public school system and you started inspiring people to own businesses, who would work at the factories and who would, who would sweep the streets and who would like, like, I guess there's probably a reason why we're not actively promoting entrepreneurship in schools but you know i you know back to the integrity thing it, it's just it's it's probably a big mess i've spent a lot of time and energy dealing with fraudsters and mm. you know, we had a 
I had a, a person a few years ago steal three hundred and forty thousand dollars. What? Wow. Um, uh, in our in our payroll company, a person inside the payroll company had created fictitious people and were paying them for a number of years. Um, but the, you know, dealing with theft and that kind of thing is is a nature of the beast. You know, I tell everyone, um, don't go blindly with your payroll service. Make sure you have an errors and admissions policy. It's critical for every business to have. And they basically, that will cover you in the event of someone embezzling money from you. Hmm. Or um, it, it's very common in the payroll space. Super common, more than you'd ever believe. Um, where people just making um, people up and paying them out of your payroll. And it's, and it gets, this is like an outside service. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about a tough conversation. You know, I'm sure that people have maybe not been ethical, maybe stolen things. How do you approach that tough conversation with someone? Oh, I, you know, you, you know, generally, well, you, you don't Let's say it's also maybe someone who's been a good performer and, and you've trusted. Well, before. It, well, th this is, this is something I've learned. Um, you have those conversations when they start day one. So I have six core values at my company, integrity, care, which is caring about the customer, accountability, adaptability, uh, respect, and excite. And I call it occur because we're from the South. That's how we say things around here. Right. Um, so, but I talk about each one of those things in a new hire class and I make sure everyone understands the importance of integrity. And I talk about, listen, Jeremy, just so you know, I can show you video after video of employees walking out of my store in handcuffs. I do not want that to be you. <laughs> I pay a lot of people a lot of money to watch my cameras 24 hours a day because fraud is big in the wireless business. And I, in fact, I tell them I have a private investigator that will challenge your integrity. And if your integrity is not where it needs to be at Absolute Wireless, I'm going to let you go. So when I make those statements, people are like, well, and I tell people, listen, if you were going to commit fraud with me, I am the worst place to do it at. There's a, you can go to a lot of different places and you'll get away with it. Like here you're not because I've, I've got too many things in, in play. And that has cut, our, I mean, I, I lost two years ago, $900,000 due to fraud. Wow. And it's because I didn't have a system. And I didn't, um, I didn't tell people up front. And when you tell people up front, you really kind of set the stage. Like, listen, this guy ain't messing around, you know? And um, it's probably the most critical conversation I have with people every, every week. I, I, it's called a how to win call at Absolute Wireless. And I spend an hour and a half, like, walking through each one of our core values to make sure everyone's on board and understand. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. What about proud moment? If you look back over the past 20 plus years, what's been an especially proud moment? Um, proud moments to me is when employees start their own businesses. Mm. I really dig that. I really enjoy that. I really think that is a, a great sign of success as we get older and we see people that were sitting next to us years ago that started their own thing and, and they're being successful at it. I love seeing, you know, I support it. If someone came to me tomorrow and said, Rob, you know, I've been working here for the last five years. I'm going to start my own wireless store. Dude, let me help you. I'll sit side by side and I'll tell you everything I know. Listen, I want to help you win. Like, I don't care if you're going to be my competitor. I want to see you successful. I mean, that to me, what we leave behind is the knowledge and skills that we teach other people that go off and do wonderful things. And those are like, you know, symbols of our success and we get to look back and look at the people that were successful as a result of spending some time with you. Yeah. So what is that? Is there a case in particular that's happened? Either they rose in the ranks to be a leader or. Oh, I have tons of those. I yeah. mean, I have tons of those opportunities where um, I get to see someone just crushing it and doing well. And I can, I can, you know, talk to, you know, I have, I have, I have team members that I do business with that I buy from them and um because they they offer great service and i really like them and i want to support them and i'm going to keep supporting them 
Robert, thank you. I'll be the first one to thank you. This has been tremendously valuable. I always learn from you whenever I talk to you. Where should we point people online? We could send them to shift your time. Where else should they check out online? Yeah, you can check me out on Facebook. I'm easy to find. Uh, Callproof.com. Yep. Where else? Yep. You can visit uh, shiftyourtime.com. And if you want to see me on Twitter, it's Heartline Robert. Cool. Robert, always a pleasure. Thanks, dude. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.